Now, as I was going to be doing a Will It Run video, but I was actually out here and uh, I was going to move some stuff around here with my little farm all A. And well, when I come out here, I discovered all the gas had leaked out of the carburetor and the gas tank's empty on it. So, apparently, the float's sticking on it. So, what we're going to do is uh, I kind of need this tractor. I got some stuff to do. So, we're going to pull this carburetor off of it and we're going to go through and rebuild this carburetor. It needs to be done anyway. So, the only tools I'm going to have I use for this as well. I got I got two six inch crescent wrenches like so, and uh, I got a needle nose pliers and a screwdriver, and that's all so I'm going to need to do this job. So, we'll go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is take my fuel line loose. Now, as I said before in my videos, I'm always keeping one of these six inch crescent wrenches or a four inch in my back pocket. My uh, sediment bowl on this thing is uh, not working correctly either, so I'm going to have to go through Steiner Tractor and uh, get me one of those, replace the one that I got on here. It's got two five sixteenths bolts here holding this on. Now, these carburetors on these little A's and B's and even the C's, you know, they're, they're real easy to work on. This is a Zeta carburetor. There we go. We're already halfway there right now. Alrighty. Now, I gotta take my, I gotta unhook my choke cable there. So, I got me a pair of needle nose players here. I just take, there's a small little cotter key down in there get the right angle I need and shoot that guy out of there and we'll be all set. Take that little rubber grommet out of there. It'll make life a little easier for us. Sometimes these little cotter keys that hold these on can be a kind of a a chore to get out of there but as this one here is kind of being a pain in the butt come on now there we go and of course we got to take in a we got our throttle rod here we got to do the same thing get that key out of there sometimes a pair of side cutters might actually work better than this but that's not what I grabbed so we're going to use the needle nose we'll still get the job done sometimes it's got to dance around with it a little bit I don't know what my gasket there we go we got that key out of there alrighty drop my gasket down here Well, there it is. Carburetor's off. This that easy. We'll take it up in the shop and get her apart and see what we need to do. Well, we'll get this little Zenith carburetor tore apart and get that in a hydro seal and soak in overnight and make up my mind on where I'm going to get my carburetor kit from, where I go for Steiner or maybe if I can see if I can find me a kit on the world's second largest river in the world. See, the problem is, uh, I do buy a lot of stuff from Steiner, but the thing is, I know if I order from Steiner, well, it's going to be a few days before I see that show up at the shop. And I'm kind of in a need for this tractor. So, how do you like that one? That's a nice little crescent wrench I got there, too. But the problem is, with some of the carburetor kits uh, on the world's second largest river in the world is... As you saw on the one we did on the H, uh, not all the parts are created equal you get in the kit. So there was a lot of parts uh, in that kit that I got we couldn't use because it just didn't fit. So well, we'll get this part and uh, we'll make that determination then. Let's go ahead and I'm pulling these plugs out of here. That one's in there a little tough there.
Hmm. Well, there we go. She come loose. Now, a lot of people ask me if these Zenith carburetors are any good. Well, I like them okay. I like the Zenith. I like the Marble Shovelers. They can all be a good carburetor, you know, if you, if you repair them right. Take care of them. It's like anything else, right? See, the, the main secret with these tractor carburetors is they're simple to go through and rebuild, but the problem is a lot of people just don't take the time and clean them properly, and, you know, they just do not have the results I'm sure they intend to have when they get them back on and running. So, well, when you're rebuilding these carburetors, it should take you a lot more time cleaning them than actually putting them back together. As a rule of thumb, in my opinion, Yeah, I'm just taking a top bowl part off of here and splitting the carburetor part. You got four straight head screws in the bottom like so. Now, nope, uh, take care. Here, jet out of here. Take that out as well. I uh, thought maybe I might be able to tap this fellow loose, but she's stuck together. I might have to go get my little brass hammer here. I'm just taking the air adjustment screw out. Just give this thing just a, a light little tap and see if we can pop it apart. Alrighty, let's take a light tap here. There we go. She come right apart. Yeah, I have seen worse in there, but what I'm concerned with right now is this float is uh, no good on it. Let's see if we can shake around rolling here any fuel in there. Nope, I don't hear any. So that's all right. So it's probably just got a piece of crud. Uh-huh, yep, that's the problem. Something stuck down there between the needle and seat, so well, we'll have to get that resolved. Now, I gotta go. I gotta go get me a ratchet and a deep well socket to get this uh, jet out of here. I'll be right back with you. Yeah. Boy, these gaskets are really old on this thing. It was definitely time for a rebuild. Oh, sometimes these here are can be a nuisance to get out. Yeah. Oh. Well, this one here is going to be a nuisance. I might have to get the old propane torch out and warm this up a little bit to make this happen. Yep, that's exactly what we're going to have to do. Son of a gun. Can't always make it too easy on us now, can you? See, the thing is, you don't want to leave that in there if you don't have to because it's, it's really kind of important to get that out of there. You know, all I'm going to do is just take my propane torch and just carefully just warn the bottom of that up a little bit there where that jet sits down in there. You don't want to overcook it. That would not be a good thing. Nothing. Control the doggone gas temperature on my torch right here. Well, it's kind of moving on here a little bit like so. Gotta have a little bit of patience and finesse when you do this. Don't want to be in a rush.
Probably just give that a try. A little bit of PV blaster down in there. See if we have some little success getting this out of here now. There we go. Alrighty. That's how we do that. Now, y'all were paying attention how I did that now, right? It just takes a little patience. They come out hard. Don't be trying to dig in there with a screwdriver and screw up your, uh, your jet here so the next guy can't get it out when he needs to. There we go. Come on. Man. And there we are. All right. Now, go ahead and I'll scrape all this off and we'll get her in a hydro seal. And when we come back, we'll have her kit and we'll, we'll get her put back together and get her on the tractor. I suppose it'd be a good idea, though, if I take this fellow out of here. We can do that real quick. I can get this guy to spin out. Oh, that one wants to fight me too. Well, let me see if I can get me a little bit wider screwdriver to go in there. Now, as what I found is a lot of times these gasket scraper blades, you get these in there, they work pretty good at popping these guys loose. Most of the time. Ugh. There we go, just like that. Now we go ahead and work that out when we pull the screwdriver. Oh yeah. That is this full of crap right there. Another reason why we need to change that sediment bowl. It's not doing its job. And that's what's that's what shut the fuel. Uh so the fuel wouldn't shut off and it was no gushing out of the carburetor. Yeah. Whoa, that is this cake full of crap down in there. No wonder why it did, no wonder why this happened. Um, we got a jet down inside there too. See, we need to take out of there. These are, these ones here make me nervous because they can come out really hard. See if I can get this screwdriver in here to spin them out of there. I don't know. Sometimes I've just had to, Clean those out the best I could in there because you definitely do not want to snap this guy off right there. You do that, you got all kinds of problems. Let me see if I can get a different screwdriver, get down in there. Might have a little bit more success. And I think I'll take my torch and warm that up a little bit. Probably get this wide one down in there if I can. If I can get it in there. I think I can make this one work right here. Well, let's take and warm that up a little bit with a torch and put some PB Blaster in there. And just be very careful doing this. Definitely a game of patience when you're doing this. Can't rush it. So you think you don't want to get it too hot because you can crack that cast iron if you're not careful. Don't know what you're doing. Let that soak for a little bit. Like I say, if I can't make this happen, I'm not going to force the issue. I've been down that road before where you break these and you got problems. There we go. There we go. Come on now. There we go. And it's out just like that.
no damage done. So there's a tip for you all out there taking these jets out. You just saw how I did it. And PV, and PV Blaster is your friend. Alrighty, we'll get this into the Hydro Seal tank. Well, we got that carburetor all cleaned out and took it out of the, the Hydro Seal. And once got that done, we ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner. And as you can see, we, we have a pretty high level of success getting these all cleaned out. So, well, we're going to go through and start putting this fella back together. So, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, I guess I should tell you where I got the carburetor kit. Now, I ended up going on the bay and I picked up this carburetor kit right here. Um, this is actually what I call a, a really good economy carburetor kit. And I ended up getting this from uh, CarFlow Carburetors. Uh, I'm not affiliated with these guys in any way, but this is, uh, this is a product I thought I'd try out and... This is a real nice kit here. You know, uh, you don't get the jets or anything like that in it. You know, if you're going to get a carburetor kit that has the jets in it, you know, if you go through Steiner, um, that's all the difference in paying over $100 for a carburetor rebuild kit as opposed to a $42.99 carburetor kit. So this is a better uh, carburetor kit from what I'm seeing here that, you know, we just did that last carburetor on the H here that we got the kit from uh, the second largest river in the world so we'll go ahead and start putting this fellow together I'm gonna start putting jets back in put a little bit of a PV blaster in here and we'll put this jet in now I always take and put a little bit of lubricant on these jets when I put them back into the housing just so there's a little bit of Lubrication, you're not putting brass, you know, in dry. Set that fellow aside for right now. Now we're going to go ahead and put this little pilot jet back in here. Now, when you're putting these carburetors back together, I just want to take and emphasize, uh, when you put these jets in, you don't have to tighten the living blazes out of them. Just run them down so they're snug. I've got this little uh, Blackhawk 2 screwdriver I like to use for doing these small jets and carburetors. Alrighty, now, be first and foremost, uh, this kit here comes with different plugs and uh, seals and if you want to take and replace the throttle shaft but you know I guess kind of in a way some might call this a hillbilly carburetor rebuild but see my throttle shaft is in good shape on this carburetor so I just don't see no need for doing any additional unnecessary work when this is all right so we're gonna leave this part alone um, if this was so sloppy and you know and jumping all over the place by all means we replace it What's even cool about this kit right here too, come on now, is uh, it even comes with a illustration list. It shows you your order, uh, how the parts go back together in this carburetor if you're not too familiar with how they go together. Now, next thing we'll do here is uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our needle and seat and float in. Now. Carburetors, they're really easy to do, I'm here to tell you. Not overly complicated by any stretch of imagination. So we'll just take and lay this out. Now, it's always important when you're putting these carburetors together is any new part you put in, hold it up in reference to the ones you took off and make sure it's the same. As you saw in that Farm OH we did, we ran into some issues and a lot of the parts were not the same. Nice. 
as we look right here this this uh the old seat this part here is the same so we we go ahead and put this fellow in And again, I gotta I just gotta get my gasket scraper to snug that. That works really good in this situation. We go just like so. So yeah, this is another good tool to have in the old toolbox here is one of these type of gasket scrapers right here. Make a really good universal wide screwdriver. Alrighty. Go ahead and put our gasket on here. Pulls on here just like so. This doesn't have the sticky backing on it. That's alright. Some of these gaskets are kind of cool. Some of these gaskets are kind of cool how they have a, a sticky back you can peel off and stick on here. This helps hold it in place, but that's alright. Now this kit also comes with a brand new float on it. The other float was fine. Alrighty. Now, I'm seeing something right now that's a little bit different on this fella. Where am I? See now, the needle's a little bit different on this guy. This has this style needle on it. I think we can make it work though. Nice, as we can that part's different on it so we can't use that fella so clean up this old needle here now I want to look at something real quick here let's see I believe that will work Nah, it won't work. See? Well, I guess we can't use this part and we got to use the original part. Because this part right here is a little bit wider than the one that was in it. So, that's alright. Well, we'll go ahead and pull this fella back out and clean the other one up. See, that's the thing with some of these aftermarket uh, carburetor kits that I run into. No stuff is made the same and I just don't I just don't understand how they cannot make all the stuff the way it was with all the technology they got today I just don't see no excuse for it so and pull that old gasket off there come on now Well, that gasket is really on there. There we go. All right, take clean this out a little bit here. All 
right, let's try this again. All right, now we found one part in this kit that won't work with the application I has. It's all right, we'll make it happen. Now, I'm going to have to take and double check that float now. Because that would be a real kick in the backside. Come to find out that thing won't work either. See, that's the thing. This kit was specifically for formal A, B, and B, N. Now, let's take a look here. <laughs> yeah, right away. This is so irritating. Even the float's a little bit different. Well, the only difference is it's got that tang for that type of float. I don't hear any hears anything in this float, so well, I'm gonna take and set this float aside, put it in with my parts. Who knows? I might need it for a different different application later. I got a BN out back that needs a carburetor rebuild, and so I sure I might use it. Alrighty, well, that makes setting the float on this easy, I guess. So, let's see, we got our hinge pinch. Well, that's right. I was got to say, it's kind of hard to get the hinge pinch. Hinge pin room. Okay. Now, I see something else here I've noticed on this carburetor. Part of this pin here is, is kind of worn, so I'm going to have to take and crimp this a little bit just to tighten that up a little bit. It's quite common on some of these old Zeniths you got to do. Now, that's what I'm talking about. In fact, I just come over here and show you what I'm talking about. Sometimes, some of these, uh, Hinge brackets here can get a little worn on there. So what we're going to do is just going to take a little pair of pliers and just squeeze that just a little bit together just to tighten that up a little bit. I just had to honestly do that to some of these Zenith carburetors. Apparently that's a design flaw they had. It don't take enough much. Just Close that gap a little bit. There we go. Make sure she actuates easy, and well, she does. Now, is what we gotta do is we gotta take and check our full level here. Now, uh, we gotta check the drop here. Make sure it's uh. Inch and five sixteenths. Might be kind of hard to hold for you all to see what I'm doing here exactly. And my pin wants to slide out when I put it that way, so that's a little bit of a constraint I'm working with. There we go. All right. Now I was just taking, hang them upside down like this, and. Go from the base with the gasket on. It's how I do it, because that's the only true, in my book, the only true way to know where your float level's at, because you got like a shim in there, basically. Okay, now inch and five sixteenths, we are beautiful. We are right there with it. Well, let's say it should be right. Now, one thing I like about this kit here it even comes with some brand new screws to put in there so i like that quite well so i'm gonna put these old dirty ones back in here i've had no need for those anymore now something i'm going to do right now let's make sure i don't forget to do this and put it back together the main nozzle in here has a 
little dinky o-ring like this I'm gonna go ahead and put this fill on here right now that way I don't miss it there we go go ahead and set our venturi in there and it goes back down there like so all right I'm gonna take and put in some of these pretty new screws they give us in the kit come with a new lock washers on there Well, they're even the right thread pitch, so that's good. That would be just pretty doggone bad. They put a carburetor kit together, they don't have the right thread pitch. Overall, even though some parts in here are different, I still feel this is a good quality kit. I just would honestly buy another one. And I look forward to getting that little lay back up and running again because I honestly I use that tractor around the shop here all the time to pull and move stuff around with. That's just a handy little tractor to have. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip right now. We, you've, you've been following this channel. We know we do a lot of stuff with uh farm oils well you know we're always picking farm oils up so well there there will be a mystery tractor come to the channel down the road here I was not gonna tell you what that is but you will see soon enough all right that's all now we gotta do is we gotta take and put our main nozzle in here so we'll go ahead and put that down in there put a little PV blaster on there and screw that down in now this is extremely important that this is clean before you put it in. Now as again, when you put this on down in there, just turn it down till it stops and that will do. Just like that. All right, now we got to put our plug in the bottom here. Gives you the, we got the right gasket for this guy that goes on here, so that's a good sign. Got my crescent wrench here. Wipe this thing off. A little bit of dirt on there from before. Alrighty, nice. This is one thing I really like about this carburetor kit right here. You see, is it's got this like little radiator petcock that goes in there. I like these a lot better if you want to drain the gas out. So I gotta go get me a little bit of sealer to put on here, and we'll, we'll get this fellow in here. Just use a little bit of pipe thread compound for this thing right here. Don't need a whole lot of this stuff on there, but you want you wants to have enough on there where you're not gonna have a fuel leak. That's what I'm trying to get away from in the first place. Because I just had a big fuel leak. 
with a float sticking in it. You can imagine. And turn this fellow in here. These many times I use a crescent wrench on stuff, I'm gonna be known as the crescent wrench mechanic. Another handy tool, keep in your back pocket. Yep, that works and functions like she's supposed to. Now, we got our air mixture screw to put back in here. So let's take a good fine look at this and make sure they got this right. Yeah, let's take a look. Well, I do believe that one will work. That's good news. So we'll stick that one off to the side and put this one in here. Goes down in there like so. Come on now. I guess I get my screwdriver help get them started in there. There we go. Boy, the spring is not wanting to cooperate with me very well. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screw this on down here. This till it stops. Do not go any more now, otherwise you damage the needle. Now, I'm going to turn this out two turns to start out. Half turn, one, one and a half, two. That's where we're going to start out with that. Alrighty, you can give us our new gasket here and that is correct. So, well, our next thing we do is we'll go out and we'll install this on the tractor. Alrighty, well let's start putting this fella back together on here. We're right, gonna start out and put our throttle shaft back on. Slide on here like so. I've had to get me a couple new cutter keys for this situation. We go we got that one straightened out now we got to get our choke hooked up this is gonna be the more difficult one to get to come on now let's get the rod in there there we go there we go we got her in there same situation got to get the cutter key in there There we go now. Oh boy, this one's a little tough. There we go, we got her. We made her happen. All right. Guess I didn't need my needle nose. Now we gotta mount this fella on here. Better get my uh, snorkel hose back on here before I get too carried away with myself. Realize I can't get that on. All right, get our bolt started. Yeah, that's on there. Wouldn't you know? I forgot to grab my half inch wrench. But 
we don't have a problem because guess what i got surprise for y'all you know what i got in my back pocket we got this fella right here so we're good to go Like I said, get yourself one of these six inch crescent wrenches to keep your back pocket. Even a four inch crescent wrench is nice to have too. You just never know when you're gonna need a universal wrench. I know a lot of people might give me some flag uh, using crescent wrenches on stuff. Well, I'd say don't use crescent wrenches on high torque situations, but this is a 5 16 bolt. Now the torque range on a 5 16 bolt is anywhere from 18 to 23 foot pounds. So I think this is more than adequate for that. I think I got enough strength in my knickers I can pull on that at least 20 foot pounds. There we go. Now we gotta hook up our fuel line here. Always take and start this fella by hand when you do this. Now this is a crush compression fitting. Now I probably should use a line wrench for this, but this for now, I'll just go ahead and use this fella. I can always come back with my line wrench and put a snug on it. Alright, that ought to do it. Now says we got this uh we got this sediment bowl i did get myself a new one to put on there so we're gonna go ahead and swap this fellow out right now and again your six inch crescent wrench comes in handy Nice for changing this fuel segment bulb because I never really could shut the gas off on this fella and that's something I likes to do. Oh well I don't know if this guy's gonna open up that big I can spin that fella out of there. Let's find out. Whoops, sorry to jiggle you guys all around there. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go get something a little bit more heavy duty to get that out of there. I'll be right back with you. I already got this three quarter wrench. See if we can make something happen with this. There we go. Yeah, that thing's definitely been in there for a while. It definitely ain't being too cooperative on coming out. There we go. Alright. Spin that fella out of there. Yeah, you can see all the gunk and crap that's in the bottom of that. Okay, this white Thread tape is pretty good stuff, but I tell you what, sure is messy, I'll say that. Put a little bit on there. Alrighty. Yeah, spin this guy around there and get it so I can hook my fuel line back up. Alright, and I'm gonna have to take and turn it back just a skosh. Sorry about that, y'all. Line him up. Alright, now. 
we were so careful to get this thing started. I tell you what, this is not a, not a whole lot of room to get stuff sitting, started in here. I tell you what, even this is giving, giving me a workout. And I'm not so into struggles very much. There we go. Now yeah, we're going in there. Well, now the only thing left is we got to put some gas in this guy. Roll them over. Yeah, the gas tank's in good shape on this one, as opposed to the H we had. There, we got that thing to quit dripping now. Well, now I guess the next thing we do is uh, we gotta fire it up. See how it runs. again but she's a little on the fat side for what I like to be it's kind of rich so I've never changed this on this since I got the tractor so I want to check this air box right here it just acts like she's not getting enough air to smooth it out oh well that air baffle there is full of water. That's definitely not doing us any favor. So we're going to go ahead and clean this out. Well, we got this thing cleaned out and filled up with oil. Let's put this thing back on here. See if that takes care of our problem. Not saying it would, but it definitely wasn't helping. All right. Try this again.
as you can see, that made a difference cleaning that that bathhouse out on it and filling with oil. It's just not getting enough airflow. And as you can see, she smoothed out some. But one thing to keep on mind on this thing, this ain't gonna be one. This tractor ain't gonna run 100% because as you can see up there, she's smoking a little bit. Uh, the motor does got some blow by in it, so we might take it uh, on down the road, come back to this, and we might pull this engine down and freshen it up a little bit. But she'll work for right now. I'll get rid of some of my mosquito problems around here now, won't it? wrap it up here on this car rebuild here on this 1945 farm all lay here uh, the sediment bowl on here it's not shutting the fuel off like it's supposed to so I'm gonna have to do some digging into that and see what's going on with it could be it's just a defective one or not but if not we'll have to get another one to put on there but uh as you can see I adjusted it and uh, once I took and I got rid of this water that was in the oil bath container and filled it with oil she started to smooth out quite a bit uh, what I'm gonna do right now and this thing is, I haven't changed the oil on this thing since I got it last year, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and put some bard all in and see if I can help this engine out here with the smoking a little bit. But I appreciate you all for stopping by here, checking this video out here. Uh, those have been following the channel. We have other videos on for farm all tractors. We got a video on some port work and head work that I did on a Super C. This is one of my tractors that I pull with. And we got a video on there of a H we've been working on. Uh, there's a, a few select videos and there'll be a lot more video content on farm oil tractors coming on down the road. We also have some little run videos on some antique guard tractors if you're interested in that. We have a whole playlist of different things you might find you're liking. So feel free to leave a comment or a like down below. And if I could convince you to subscribe, that'd be excellent. Until next time, we'll see you in our next video. Take care, everyone.